Hey gang, Scott Davenport here. On today's video, I'm recapping some of the themes that emerged from photographing Big Sur. A couple of weeks ago, I hosted a set of photographers in the Big Sur area of California. Had a great time. Uh, we had some weather challenges. We had some good days. We had uh, uh, photo opportunities all over the place. And uh, after a workshop, I like to think about what were some of the themes that emerged because each workshop is unique and it all depends on the the, you know, the different scenery that we have, the different conditions that we have. And there were a few things that uh, you know it's tended to, uh, to kind of bubble up in my mind. I thought I'd go through them here. Now, the first one is element separation. And that is a very important aspect of composition, especially with seascapes. And I thought the best way to do that is show you an example here. This is a typical scene of some of the seascapes we were working on in Big Sur. And I want to point out a couple of notes here is we have a lot of different smaller patches of rock. And in this area in particular, this is one rock here and this is a second rock behind it. And right now it's hard to see the difference in that. And this gets exaggerated uh, at a sunset when these types of rocks are backlit. It can become very, very uh, difficult to tell that there are differences there. Now here we have three different tiers of rocks in the foreground. Those are a little easier to make out just because of like, for example, here, the ridge line on this rock is set against a darker rock behind it. The second to third one, a little harder to tell. This is actually the edge here, and this is a third rock. And well, as we compose, we watch the ocean for a little bit, and we can set up our shot so that when the water surges in, we get the separation. So let's take a look at this photo. The same scene just had that surge of water come through, and now the separation is much clearer, and this makes the composition cleaner. And uh, you know, one can envision you know, either whether this is uh, land, you're walking through these paths, or if you were in a, a kayak or a, a boat, you know, sailing through these paths, the space between the elements, just making it clearer that there is foreground, there is midground, and then there is background, adding those uh, those layers and that depth. And so sometimes that means bringing our tripod up and angling downward a little bit, but composing in such a way that the elements get separated and it can convey more depth in the scene. So this is one thing that, that came up again and again, whether we were at sea level shooting at the ocean or we were higher up on the bluffs and there's all the different sea stacks there, making sure there was good separation among them to strengthen the composition. A second theme that came up is where to frame in terms of cutting things off at the margins of the photo, at the edges of the frame, right? In post-processing, you've seen me do a bunch of times, border patrol, sweep around the edges of the frame and decide is something distracting and pulling the eye away. Well, when we're out with the camera, what can we do to compose to minimize the amount of uh, border patrol and cleanup we have to do in post? So I'll, I'll call this the fingertip principle. And so the idea being you either want to do a significant cut of some element or include it all. Like for a fingertip, don't just trim off the tiniest bit of it. Uh, either you know, cut it, you know, cut it a knuckle or include the entire finger. And so here's an example of what I'm talking about. So in this scene, I've got you know a pretty a pretty decent sweep. You know, here's some foreground. We have some nice lines cutting through. But as this land comes all the way out to the edge. It gets very, very thin toward the left edge of the frame, and you know I want to see the rest of that land. I either want to, you know, I want to see where that concludes. I've just trimmed the tiniest bit off of it, and that leads to some tension. I should either include the whole thing or cut more of it. And so here's a second photo where similar scene. I'm just trimming off much more of it. Got some human element in this one as well, so there's more scale, but you know, that's a secondary thing. As far as the principle I'm talking about here is where to trim at the edge. And so this is to me a less, um, less tense scene. Our minds will fill in that there is land. I mean, land doesn't just cut off like that, uh, but with just a tiny sliver of it trimmed off, it just feels like the composition either should have been a little bit wider and include it, in this case, tighten in a little bit, and this is trimmed off, and it's okay. I, you know, it's not uh, it's not as, as tense for the mind. These other rocks, like I'm giving breathing room here. Now, there's always going to be limits on what you can do. Some of those limits will just be imposed by what you're able to frame up or how busy the edges of a scene are. So, for small, tiny pieces that you can't deal with in camera, we can deal with those in post with you know retouching tools or so forth. 
The same principle applies to you know, other subjects as well, like these rocks on the right-hand side, making sure there's a healthy cut here. It's not like there's a, a small gap that appears where, you know, if this rock dips down and goes back up, you know, finding a good cut line for it so that it exits the frame gracefully, and that strengthens your overall composition. A third theme is that there are photo opportunities to be had in all sorts of weather conditions. We had some days where we had patches of rain. We had another day where it was just completely gray the entire day. The fog never lifted. It just clung to the land. We still went out with the cameras and found things to photograph. Different style for some of them, different subject matter, but it's not the, uh, you don't have to stay inside. You can get out and find photos. This one here went to uh, Spanish Bay Beach, and there are just all sorts of these you know, little uh, cairns, these small rock stacks that people have just stood up. So forgetting about the Grand Vista, get in on one of these things, and you can see how, how gray this day is. I gave it even a, a, a treatment with a split tone to change the color of it, just to give it a different mood, take it a little more in an artistic direction versus a realistic direction. Here's another photo facing back toward the land. The ocean is behind me in this camera. This wash coming out of the, the valley there leading into the ocean looked great against the green backdrop. You can see how there's still like mist and, and, and haze and fog all over the place. And that can just be contextual. There was a, a nice little valley here to, to photograph. And this was probably 15 minutes before sunset. You know, the sun did not make an appearance that night, but there were things to find and photograph. So uh, if you get one of those very gray days, treat it like, you know, a really big soft box. It's going to have, you know, a soft diffused light. Find something either, uh, you know, macro-ish, whether it be macro or not, like the, the photo of the stack of rocks. That was very small. That was maybe this high, you know, so, you know, the, you know, the height of maybe my torso. But yeah, you can make it look large in life. Get in close on it, make it you know look nice and tall. Find things to photograph. There's always going to be an opportunity. Short of being in a torrential downpour, you can find something to make your camera happy. Well, those are the major themes that bubbled up for me during the workshop, at least for the camera side of the work, and really did spend much more time working with the cameras and being outdoors than we did with the screens. You know, you're working through weather, so you get outside when you can with the camera uh, to uh, capture as many photos as possible. And I'm looking forward to the next round of workshops in the fall. There is some space available if you'd like to join me. I'm going to Acadia and Oregon. And I hope you enjoyed the video and you can apply some of these uh, techniques to your own compositions and you know strengthen your photos. If you got questions about photography? You know the drill. Hit me up in the comments below. If you want to keep it private? Send it to me through my website. And until next time, my name is Scott Davenport and happy shooting.